Considering my main introduction to Jojo was through Pyrocynical videos making fun of Jojo Siwa, who looking back, Araki really could have inserted into the canon. So safe to say, I'm not exactly a Jojo expert, which I don't know is probably for the best. But either way, if I can just shut up the people who have been asking me to talk about the OVAs for the past year, the sacrifice is worth it. So without further ado, let's go side by side my all time favorite Marvel fight, Jotaro vs Dio. Now starting with the newer take, the animator who presumably handles it animated the scene where man eats cherry, so already I've lost a bit of faith in him. Now Kurta at this point had been a regular on the series and also worked as an action animation director. If you ever see a word put before animation director like effects, mecha, this is an indicator that this is a specialist role. So having someone like that was certainly a great choice for the big finale of this arc. Now on the other side is Junichi Hayama, who was the character designer for the OVAs and had already done a lot of key animation in the prior episode, so no idea why he's back already, that's quite a workload, although he was mentored by the legendary Masami Suda, who was known for being absurdly fast, so yeah, maybe he absorbed that off him. So with the backstory out of the way, let's actually go side by side. So the first thing to point out is what's referred to as anticipation. This is needed when animating an action because you're preparing the audience for said action, as well as creating build-up. Additionally, it gives a sense of energy and strength behind it, which is kind of important when someone's getting a biff in the noggin. Kurta illustrates this through a full rotation. Hayama's on the opposite end is a bit simpler in that respect. And on a side note, I definitely approve of the Kanada-style effects work. You can see his influence throughout a lot of Kurta's work, Although going off his recent stuff, the Kanadaisms seem to have died down a bit. Although it's the next cut of Jotaro that's rather interesting. Kurta uses higher frame rates, timing out the cut entirely on just twos. What this means is that every two frames you have a new drawing on screen. Hayama's though is much more modulated, going from twos to fours then back to threes. However, I would argue Hayama's is much smoother and the same with the cut prior. Now that's not to say smooth animation instantly equals good animation, that's a massive oversimplification. Although this is a good example that higher frame rates aren't an instant guarantee to smooth and interesting motion. And how the animator spaces out the drawings is really important. In this case, Hayama's is pretty clear, it gradually tightens as Jotaro draws back his arm, then suddenly widens to illustrate a sudden burst of speed. Kurtas fluctuates a bit, which combined with his camera work, zooming out and focusing on certain parts of the body, is stylish in its own right. Still, for me personally, I think the killing blow by Hayama flows a little nicer, while the timing is much more interesting and the anticipation is just that bit stronger. Now, next cut, there's the classic triple repeat. Some people don't like it, but I really don't mind, it's totally fine. The 93 take is still as well and flickers the two characters stands in and out, which is cool. Nothing really though to say much about that cut. But to the next one, Kurtas is much more of a bloody take, which works well. This scene was a clever little way to throw the audience off and make you think that Jotaro was bested for a brief second, which definitely got me. Although by adding the extra amount of damage, of course illustrated through the blood and effects, it kind of sells that just a bit more. Now Dio's death in the two versions is very similar in terms of the storyboard. The only main difference I would mention is that when Dio explodes, he's framed in front of this inferno, which coincidentally was of his own doing. It's very striking imagery and with that memorable. Now in terms of animation, both are more animated in certain parts than others. So there's not some large contrast between the two in that area. Although there is in terms of character art. While Hayama puts out some excellent drawings here, Kurta takes it up a notch and packs another level of expression to the characters. But let's actually touch on the how with these two shots. The first is how he's defined certain muscle groups more. When you tense up the face, there are two large creases that form under your eyes and beside your nose. Now you can see that detailed a bit in Hayama's, although Kurta brings that out more, with large shapes and much sharper ones at that. Like I've said before in my video, shapes communicate different messages, rounder designs can give a softer feel, while sharp, a harsher one. 
and having some pointy triangular shapes certainly does the trick. And funny enough, this actually also ties in with the mouth. If you look at the angle, it comes to a triangle, with several lines there also to illustrate the creases. Kurtus, on the other hand, while it also forms a similar shape, doesn't have those strong curves down and around. It's really interesting how important these two particular features are to bringing out intensity. Like one animator I've brought up multiple times and that always nailed it was Keisuke Masanaga. And one reason his work was so expressive is how he pushed these features, especially the mouth. Rather than the simpler boxy look of the show, he would angle it, again in a triangle, and emphasize the gap between the teeth. But anyway, back to Jojo, there's some other stuff like the posing, the head and neck are angled, with a bit more of a head tilt making the image feel more three-dimensional and not as flat in front on. At the same time, Kutus can be a little rigid in this area, like literally in the next cut, everything's just straight, whereas this time Hayama angles the head off to the side and adds curvature to the neck, which feels more natural. Another example with Jojiro, Hayama, instead of using a lot of straights, adds more curvature to the shading and hatching and with that defines the cheekbone, as well as the muscles tightening around his nose. And as a result, the expression feels more lifelike. Of course, Kurtus certainly isn't a bad drawing either, although this is a good example that just because an image is closer to the manga, or on model, says little about the actual quality of said drawing. Now wrapping things up, this scene, not the two episodes on the whole, are both solid in terms of direction and storyboard, although I would argue 93 inches may be a little higher in that area. 93's animation is also looser at times, as well as the drawings generally, although I think the contrast in those departments are more so noticeable when looking at the entire episode rather than in a confined manner like we've done here. And perhaps this might sound a little nitpicky, but considering this was the big arc finale, even though this is TV anime, the schedule is much stricter. And going off the fact it had two directors and seven animation directors, so they certainly didn't seem to have time on their side, could have just been a bit more animated. Either way, where the newer adaptation shines most is through its spectacular character art, which is amazing for all the reasons I've stated already. But yeah, I would say both versions did justice to the source material, but of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments, and also check out our sponsor, Fandom Eon, for some epic anime merch and meme merch. I'm unsure why a man wearing a night outfit comes under that category, considering that's what I personally wear daily. Either way, click my link in the description and enter the code RELIC for a 10% discount, ultra rare, so check it out if you're looking for a shirt and want to support the channel. But with that, thank you for watching and I'll see you later.